Welcome, it's good to see you again. I hope you're okay. And it's good to welcome you to this worship video which I'm introducing today from within the church building itself, which maybe is a little sign of progress in these difficult times. Life is like a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. So it said Tom Hanks in the well-known film Forrest Gump. And there is real insight, is there not, in that homespun wisdom? Because life is often very difficult to predict. And sometimes the most unforeseen things come to pass. But that's not to say that life is governed by fate. Or that we just have to go with the flow of time. For we can make choices. We can make choices as to how we will respond to the unforeseen. Choices about the goals that we will set for our lives. Today in this worship, our theme is choice. In particular, the choice that Jesus sets before us to seek first the kingdom of God above everything else. But to begin with, let's listen now to a well-known hymn.
The journey of life can sometimes be very troubling. We often stumble and have difficulty following in God's footsteps. But we must never doubt God's presence with us. God will never let us down. He promises us his strength, his peace, his comfort and his presence. When it seems that life is whirling out of control and we are dealing with COVID-19, we can take comfort in God's sovereignty and power. Let us pray. Light of the world, enter into the depths of our lives. Come into the dark and hidden places. Walk in the storehouse of our memories. Hear the hidden secrets of the past. Plumb the very depth of our being. Be present through the silent hours and bring us safely to your glorious light. Lord our God, today, Help us to give our minds to you in our worship so that we may listen to what you have to say to us and know your will. Help us to give our hearts to you in our worship so that we may really want to do what you require from us. Help us to give our strength to you in our worship so that through us your will may be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Philippians 4 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us join now together in the prayer that we all know so well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now let us come before him with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. Amen.
No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grasses of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. Wishing to develop his son's character, a father gave him two coins, ten pence and a fifty pence, before they left for church one Sunday. Now he said, you choose which coin to put into the plate. When they got home, he asked his son, So what did you put in? Well, said the boy, Just before the plate came round, the minister said, The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And I thought, I'll be a lot more cheerful if I put the ten pence in and keep the fifty. Children are often endearingly honest. They tell us just what's in their minds. They describe for us their true priorities. That matter of priorities was important to Jesus too. He reminded his listeners again and again of the importance of not allowing our lives to slip by without giving thought to priorities. Psychologists say that much of who we are and how we behave and what attitudes we reveal are assimilated from others, perhaps from our parents or peers or maybe from our society as a whole. How often do we find ourselves saying and doing things that our parents said and did before us? In this, we're rather like a ship at sea. Like a large ship at sea, the course of our lives has been set from early on. And that course is not wholly of our own choosing. And it's often very difficult to change that course. It takes a lot of time and effort. It's difficult to change the direction that we're heading in. But even the largest ship can be changed if the captain wants. For the captain can send orders down to the person steering and gradually, ever so gradually, the church ship can change course. And in the same way, the course of our lives can be altered by giving time to think and to act. And this is a motivation for much of Jesus' teaching. Jesus was so keen to stress to his listeners that they needed to give thought to their priorities, to the course that they were steering. 
that they should give thought to their priorities and think in terms of the kingdom of God. So what is the kingdom of God that Jesus speaks about? Mostly, I guess, when we think of kingdoms such as the kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, we think of land, we think of governments, we think of laws and so on. But the kingdom of God is so, so different. For Jesus, the kingdom of God is simply the way of life that he, Jesus, followed and that he exemplifies. And to understand what that way of life involves, just think for a moment of the Lord's Prayer which sums up Jesus' aspirations for his own life and for his followers. The Lord's Prayer begins with these words, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, the first few sentences of the Lord's Prayer are all about God, are all about recognising and reverencing God. This, says Jesus, is the first priority. This is what it means to seek first the kingdom of God, to place God, to place Jesus and the values that Jesus taught, the values of love and forgiveness, right at the very centre of our living. I wonder if you ever do a jigsaw. I do from time to time, though I'm not very good at it. But when I do a jigsaw, I try to work out the frame or outer edges of the jigsaw first, so that I'll have a context in which I can then fill in the picture in the middle. Our commitment to God and Christ is to be the frame of the jigsaw of our lives. It's to be the context within which we can fill in the picture of how our lives will be lived. Archbishop Coggan once said, I go through life as a transient on his way to eternity, made in the image of God, but with that image debased needing to be taught how to meditate, to worship, and to think. Christians are those who recognise that beyond food and drink and accommodation and beyond, beyond all the everyday enjoyments and pleasures, there are yet important things to discover about ourselves, about the significance of our lives, and about the bigger purpose that our lives may follow. And this is what it means to seek first the kingdom of God. A domestic mystery that always amazes me is how quickly the laundry basket gets filled up. Our lives can be like that too. They get full very, very quickly, with all sorts of important concerns, concerns about money, about where we're going to live and what we're going to do, and what the future will hold. So many concerns that can easily crowd out other important issues. And that's why we need reminding over and over again of Jesus' words. Seek first the kingdom of God. Where is that kingdom that we seek? Well, it's not found on a map. The kingdom is found wherever people are being reconciled to God, wherever they're coming to embrace God's way of love and forgiveness. The kingdom is found wherever people are being reconciled one to the other, wherever they're learning to deal with each other in an exact and unprejudiced way, and to deal with each other in a humble and teachable way, 
And the kingdom of God is found when we see that peace with others including includes learning to share, to share our wealth and knowledge, to share position and power, and that it includes two turning swords and to plowshares, bringing healing to the sick and new hope to the poor. In the Bible, the kingdom is always God's gift, but the kingdom is also always ours to discover. And that's why we must listen time and again to Jesus' words when he says, Seek first the kingdom of God. God, you hear the calls, 
the cries, the voices raised, the silent whispered prayers. Israel in captivity, crying out for deliverance. Joseph in prison, calling out for freedom. Jesus on the cross, praying for your presence. Bartimaeus in his desperation, searching for a cure. And still today the voices cry out. In Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, in China, in the many countries struggling with the pandemic, and here in Great Britain, the homeless in their vulnerability asking for a welcome, the rich in their emptiness longing for acceptance, the lonely in their busyness crying for community, the families in their arguments praying for peace. God, you hear the calls, the cries, the voices raised, the silent whispered prayers. Hear our prayers today and help us where we can to be the answer to someone else's prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. we sorrow, other times we embrace. Sometimes we question everything we face. Yet in our yearning is a deep learning. We belong to God. We belong to God. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day 
and evermore. Amen.